New players in Harry Potter Wizards Unite may feel a bit lost and directionless. Unlike Pokemon Go, Wizards Unite has many moving pieces and different activities, and depending on where you live, you may find yourself surrounded by some confusing icons. Here's what to do first in Harry Potter Wizards Unite. Before you get overwhelmed by all the menus and icons all over the place, why don't you take a moment to personalize yourself? Click on the icon in the bottom left part of the screen on the main map, at which point you'll be able to customize your ministry ID in several ways. Take a portrait, try out some filters, and be on the lookout for more than unlock as you level up. Pick your Hogwarts house, because that's what all Harry Potter fans do, right? Customize your very own wand. Choose what color it looks like, the length, and even the color of the spell effects by picking a core. You'll also unlock tiles and achievements as you progress, so be sure to check back often to add new ones to impress your friends who check your ID. Where Pokemon Go had you catching them all, Wizards Unite is a bit more complicated. Essentially, you're tracking down foundables and warding off confoundables to add to your registry, which span a number of categories. Like Pokemon, these events appear randomly as you travel around, marked by large colored icons. If you're having trouble figuring out where to find specific types, look around for flagpoles bearing one of the icons. That means you have a better chance of finding that type when exploring that area. It's worth trying to find different types in the opening hours of the game, as you'll get bonus experience for finding new things and using different spells in each of them to level up that much faster. As you find more foundables to add to your registry, you'll gain levels in that particular category, which in turn unlocks more items and perks, but more on that soon. You won't be able to run around casting spells forever. Much like Pokemon Go's Pokeballs, casting spells will use up energy, and your total of 75 energy can deplete faster than you think. In order to get some of that energy back, hit up every inn you can find. While here, you get to pick from one of five random food items, which can replenish anywhere from one to six energy. You'll have to wait five minutes before you can come back for more energy, and you can always look on the map for inns with smoke coming out of the chimney to know which inns are still on a cooldown. If you still need more energy, you can always try your luck at pulling herbs in the greenhouses, leveling up, or completing tasks. In a worst case scenario, you can also pay gold to recharge your energy, but gold is in short supply unless you really want to pay real money for it. Keep a lookout for random smaller items that appear on the ground in your travels. Tap to pick up the ingredients, which can be used to craft a variety of potions. You can also find these in greater numbers by visiting greenhouses. Tapping the potions icon on the suitcase will let you dump and set ingredients you find to make a variety of potions, increasing your power in casting spells, healing damage from challenges, and much more. Unfortunately, these potions can take anywhere from 2 to 12 hours at the start, so make sure you're always brewing some type of potion instead of waiting until you really need it to start crafting. You'll also start finding strange port key boxes. These work a bit like Pokemon egg incubators. You'll have to begin unlocking them with a key, which then requires a set distance traveled to fully unlock. You should start unlocking them whenever possible and use any silver keys you find to unlock additional port keys at the same time. After you get the hang of how things work, tap the Assignments tab in the bottom right corner to see the currently assigned tasks and achievements waiting to be unlocked. By checking in on what's expected of you, you can start to earn a lot of bonus items, energy, and more by quickly knocking out objectives when you know what to look for. This is also one of the best ways to earn gold aside from leveling up, which can be used to purchase inventory expansions, replenish energy, or fill in missing potion ingredients. One of the more endgame parts of Wizards Unite is taking on the fortresses that you find when exploring the world. Once you feel like you have a handle on tracing spells and have some potions with you, travel to one and try taking on the first section by yourself or with a friend. A fortress challenge requires runes, which are mostly given to you from getting better ranks in each of the registry sections. This is why finding foundables are so important. Once inside a fortress, you'll have to battle against enemies to complete challenges. Enemies can also damage you, so take a break in your offense, trace a quick line of protection to mitigate damage and keep yourself alive longer. Defeat all enemies in a challenge, and you'll get more rewards and experience, which will put you well on your way to taking on tougher challenges. And that's everything you need to get started in Harry Potter Wizards Unite. Be sure to check out our wiki guide for even more information, and for everything else, stick with IGN.